Why do we wear woolens in December? Why is May so hot and uncomfortable? And why does it rain heavily in June? The answers lie in India's climate. Climate is different from weather. Weather is the atmosphere's state at a moment. Climate is the pattern of weather over 30 years or more. Temperature, wind, humidity and rainfall all shape the climate. India has a monsoon-type climate. Monsoon comes from the Arabic word mausim, meaning season. It refers to the seasonal reversal of winds. These winds bring both life-giving rains and challenges. India's climate varies greatly. Summer in Rajasthan can touch 50 degrees C, while Pahalgam in Kashmir stays around 20 degrees C. In winter, Dras can drop to 45 degrees C, but Kerala enjoys a mild 26 degrees C. Day and night temperatures differ too. In the Thar Desert, days hit 50 degrees C, nights fall to 15 degrees C. Meanwhile, Andaman and Kerala see almost no change. Rainfall patterns are equally diverse. Most of India receives rain from June to September. Meghalaya sees over 400 cm annually, while Ladakh and western Rajasthan get less than 10 cm. Tamil Nadu gets its rain mainly in October-November. These differences shape how people live, their food, clothes, and houses. Thick walls and flat roofs in Rajasthan keep homes cool. Sloping roofs in Goa and Mangalore drain heavy rains. Assam builds houses on stilts to survive floods. India's climate is more than numbers. It's a story of diversity, resilience, and adaptation. From snowy peaks to deserts, monsoon-soaked coasts to dry plateaus, this variety makes India truly incredible. What makes India so diverse in weather? Why do some places get heavy rains, while others remain dry and hot? The answer lies in the factors that control climate. There are six major controls of climate. Latitude, altitude, pressure and winds, distance from the sea, ocean currents, and relief features. Latitude affects how much solar energy a place receives. That's why temperature generally drops as we move from the equator towards the poles. Altitude matters too. Higher regions like mountains are cooler than plains. Distance from the sea or continentality influences extremes. The farther you are from the ocean, the hotter the summers and colder the winters. Coastal areas enjoy more moderate temperatures. Ocean currents also warm or cool nearby coasts depending on whether they are warm or cold. Relief features like mountains can block cold or hot winds. They can trigger rainfall if positioned in the path of moist winds. The leeward side of mountains often remains dry. India lies across the Tropic of Cancer, so half of it is tropical and the rest subtropical. The Himalayas block cold Central Asian winds, making winters milder than in Central Asia. Winds also play a crucial role. During winter, cold, dry, northeasterly winds blow from the Himalayas to the oceans. In summer, the situation reverses. Low pressure over India pulls in warm, moisture-laden southwest monsoon winds from the ocean, bringing heavy rainfall. Thus, India's climate is shaped by a perfect mix of latitude, winds, oceans, mountains, and relief. This combination creates the rich diversity of weather patterns that influence life, agriculture, and culture across the country. India experiences a unique monsoon-type climate, which means our weather changes dramatically with the seasons. Let's explore the coldest season, winter. The cold weather season starts in mid-November and lasts until February. December and January are the chilliest months in northern India. Here daytime is fairly warm but nights can get very cold. Frost is common and the higher slopes of the Himalayas are covered in snow. In coastal cities like Chennai, the winter temperature averages between 24 to 25 degrees C, while in northern plains it ranges from 10-15 degrees C. This season is marked by clear skies, low humidity, and light winds. During winter, northeast trade winds blow from land to sea, making most of the country dry. But along the Tamil Nadu coast, these winds pick up moisture from the Bay of Bengal, bringing some rainfall. Over the northern plains, a weak high-pressure system forms, sending light winds through the Ganga Valley. A key feature of the winter season in northern India is the inflow of cyclonic disturbances from the west and northwest. 
Originating over the Mediterranean Sea and Western Asia, these systems bring winter rainfall, locally called Mahawat, and snowfall in the mountains. These rains are vital for the cultivation of rabi crops. In contrast, the peninsula region doesn't experience a well-defined winter. Thanks to the moderating influence of the sea, there's hardly any noticeable drop in temperature, and the season is much milder here. So, India's winters vary from icy Himalayan peaks and chilly northern plains, to warm, mild southern coasts. This diversity of climate shapes life, agriculture and culture across the country. Summer in India arrives as the sun's heat belt shifts northwards. From March to May, the country bakes under the scorching sun. Temperatures rise steadily during these months. In March, the Deccan Plateau can reach 38 C. By April, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh heat up to 42 C. In May, the northwestern states often see 45 C. The peninsular regions remain cooler thanks to the moderating influence of the oceans. As summer progresses, northern India experiences rising temperatures and falling air pressure. By the end of May, a long low-pressure zone stretches from the Thar Desert to Patna and Chotanagpur Plateau, setting the stage for air circulation and the approaching monsoon. A striking feature of Indian summers is the Lu, strong, gusty, hot, dry winds blowing across north and northwestern India. Direct exposure can be dangerous. Dust storms often sweep through in May, bringing temporary relief with light rain and cool breezes. Summer is also the season of local thunderstorms, accompanied by violent winds, torrential rains and sometimes hail. In West Bengal, these pre-monsoon storms are famously called Kal Baisakhi. Towards the end of summer, pre-monsoon showers appear, especially in Kerala and Karnataka. These mango showers are crucial for early ripening of mangoes and a welcome relief from the heat. So, India's hot weather season is marked by soaring temperatures, strong winds, dust storms, thunderstorms, and refreshing pre-monsoon showers, all setting the stage for the monsoon to follow. By early June, the northern plains develop a strong low-pressure area, inviting the winds of the southern hemisphere to arrive. These winds, called the southwest monsoon, cross the equator, turn right due to the Coriolis effect, and enter India carrying abundant moisture. Blowing at 30 km h on average, they cover almost the entire country within a month, bringing a dramatic change in weather. Early in the season, the windward side of the Western Ghats receives over 250 cm of rainfall. Even the Deccan Plateau and parts of Madhya Pradesh get rain despite lying in rain shadow regions. The maximum rainfall, however, occurs in northeastern India, with Morsin Ram in Meghalaya recording the highest average rainfall in the world. The monsoon is never constant. It brings alternating wet and dry spells called breaks in rainfall. When the monsoon trough shifts northwards, plains receive heavy rain. When it shifts closer to the Himalayas, the plains remain dry while the mountains experience heavy showers. Tropical depressions forming over the Bay of Bengal intensify rainfall, sometimes causing floods. This uncertainty makes the monsoon both a blessing and a challenge. While it nourishes crops, its irregularity can lead to floods in one area and droughts in another, affecting millions of farmers across India. In October and November, the sun moves southward. The monsoon trough weakens, high-pressure systems emerge, and the southwest monsoon gradually withdraws from the northern plains. This period is a transition from hot rainy weather to dry winter conditions. Days remain warm while nights turn cool and pleasant. The land is still moist, making the daytime weather feel oppressive, often called the October heat. By early November, low-pressure zones shift to the Bay of Bengal, giving rise to cyclonic depressions originating near the Andaman Sea. These cyclones move towards eastern coasts, bringing heavy rains and sometimes causing widespread damage. Thickly populated deltas of rivers like Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri are frequently affected. Cyclones hitting Odisha, West Bengal and Bangladesh also bring bulk rainfall to the Coromandel coast, marking the last phase of the monsoon season. So, the retreating monsoon marks a transition, clearing skies, residual moisture and occasional cyclones, preparing India for the dry winter season ahead. India's rainfall is unevenly distributed. The western coast and northeastern regions receive over 400 cm annually, while western Rajasthan, parts of Gujarat, Haryana and Punjab get less than 60 cm. Low rainfall is also experienced in the interior Deccan Plateau, east of the Sayadris, and around Leh in Jammu and Kashmir. 
Snowfall, however, is limited to the Himalayan region. The monsoon brings variability in rainfall every year. Regions with low rainfall, like western Rajasthan and Gujarat, are drought-prone, while areas with heavy rainfall often face floods. The Himalayas shield northern India from the extreme cold winds of Central Asia, keeping temperatures relatively higher. The peninsula plateau, surrounded by seas on three sides, enjoys moderate temperatures. Despite these moderating influences, India experiences wide variations in temperature and rainfall. Monsoon acts as a unifying force across the country. Seasonal changes in wind patterns and associated weather conditions create a rhythmic cycle of seasons. The entire agricultural calendar, festivals, and daily life of people are intricately tied to the monsoon. From north to south and east to west, Indians eagerly await the monsoon each year. These winds provide the water needed for agriculture and bind the diverse landscape into a single, interconnected river valley system. Thus, the monsoon is not just rainfall. It is the lifeline of India, shaping its land, life, and culture year after year.